I'm going to give you the floor for a few minutes to say some final words. I didn't, you didn't prepare this, so wing it. Um, okay, so I kind of, I kind of knew this might be coming. So I was looking at the discussion forums and I was looking back at the Cage Week, and um, I love, I love this post by Sandra Stevenson. She wrote, "A poem is a place where language doesn't mean what it means in the same way." Um, and then she had, you know, that it was a really great, great post, great, great thread about cage and creativity and control and ideology. And it kind of reminded me of this other book I've been reading by Deborah Appleman, who's an English teacher. She works in the prisons. She works with high school students and she works with college students. And her argument is that the literature classroom, the language arts classroom, is the best place to talk about ideology and to resist ideology if you need to. And that's kind of what drives me, and that's what's driven me throughout ModPo, is not just the conversations about the words, but about what they mean and what they don't mean and what they should mean, um, and how to be skeptical and healthily suspicious um, and look past them when we need to. Great. Um, Molly O'Neill, you were uh, with us for weeks and weeks as we did those recordings, and it was tons of fun. It was. Hard work, wasn't it? <laughs> it was very hard work. And uh, I apologize for not being more visible on the forums after the filming, but I was watching, even if I wasn't talking a lot, and getting all the updates. And uh, what really struck me is how the community we've built here at the Kelly Writers House was able to expand all over the world. Um, and I really think that learning is best when it's a communal experience and the work that you guys did interacting with each other and supporting one another and constructively criticizing one another was just so inspiring. None of you had to be here. None of you had to do this, but you wanted to learn and you wanted to get in there and, and that's just so great. Thank you, Molly. It's fantastic. Um, Max, do you have a final thought? I do. I have, I have two final words. I'm going to the, uh, I'm going to the texts for for my final words. I actually already offered them in a roundabout way to Anthony and Susan, who asked uh, us to autograph their mugs. They're, they're this, so all their writer's house mugs. The first is here as long as you are, as long as you are, uh, from Sid Corman, of course. And the other is no layoff from this condensory. <laughs> so they're not actually even final words. There's no finality there. And I think that's why they're perfect. Very slick, Max. <laughs> um, <laughs> When you say no layoff from this condenser, it means you can't be fired. <laughs> well, <laughs> right? Am I saying? Am I right? I, like, it's how not a challenge. Fired from what? <laughs> I mean, like if I said to Mark Drexler, "You're fired." Fired from what? Fired from I mean, what? Yeah. Like wh he just joined us. Was brilliant. So often, Mark. So often, brilliant. You can't um, be fired from Modpo. And it, 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 it can't is get even fired. Ending. We can't get fired. <laughs> we're just doing something because we're human beings and we wanted to get together. Um. So here's Amaris, and she left this morning. She was just upset that she couldn't be with us. She's sort of on her way to the airport now. Uh, but she, it turns out that she said something that I don't think she would have the nerve to say in front of us because she's essentially a shy person. So here she goes. Steve, are you ready for this? As Modpo reaches one kind of ending, I can only reach out and thank everyone who has been a part of this experience. I feel so grateful to Al, who has tirelessly demonstrated the qualities of a leader who truly deserves our admiration and respect, and to all the students for being so open and forthcoming with your stories and reflections, and for creating a safe place for those thoughts to be exchanged. In the simplest of terms, MAPU has filled me with hope, hope that communities built around inclusiveness, generosity, and deep reflection can still exist. I was inspired every day by the time and effort people put into this class, by the risks they took in their interpretations. It showed me that there are people who appreciate poetry, who can quickly access it if they will only open themselves to the possibility. The simple lesson that intimate connections are desired and made possible through poetry has given me all the confirmation and additional drive I needed to be certain that poetry is the path I'd like to pursue. Thank you to everyone who has been a part of this community and who has allowed me to be a part of it. You've all filled Modpo with unforgettable warmth, enthusiasm, humor, and spirit. And I can only hope that I can one day bring this experience to others. You've made me laugh and cry, taught me and touched me more than you will ever know. 
Thank you so much again. Amaris will be watching this as a recording, so this is our chance to thank Amaris Skachansky. Here's our buddy, Dave Poplar. I've never made muffins, first off. <laughs> but that's not true. I thought you were making muffins I, for tonight. I made cornbread. <laughs> he makes cornbread in a crock pot, okay? What? I only, I only, use, a, I only use a crock pot or a George Foreman grill. That, that's, that's it. TMI, give your final word. Not to be a contrarian, but like Mark, I um, refuse to give final words because I don't think it is the end. I think it's, it is the beginning of things. Um, this class was not really just about the material, but about trying to see the world in another way. And not just that, but to do it with other people. And I think that's what's going to continue. And for lack of a more highbrow literary reference, I think of the movie The Matrix. <laughs> and at the end of that movie, Neo dies. And it's the end, but it's not the end, because... Because, because it's science fiction, Dave. I mean, well, it's, where's the analogy? It's, when Neo dies, he comes back. And when he comes back, he sees everything differently. And from that point on, he goes and approaches the rest of the world with that perspective and with his crew. So I hope everybody can be Neo with their crew <laughs> going forward. What character does that make me? You're Morpheus. <laughs> what are you talking about? Dave. Thank you, Dave. Um, we're going to go to Anna, and then I'm going to turn the camera around on Chris and talk to him for a second. Okay, Anna? Uh, I'm just... I'm just so I'm just so thankful for this whole experience. I mean, I, you know, we talked last April or March or whatever it was, and you know, I'm in Al's office and we're talking all that advisory stuff. And uh, you know, he's like, you know, I'm gonna do this crazy project in the over the summer. Are you interested? And I remember just sitting there like, I, I didn't even know like what what to say, how to even like comprehend like the scope of what we were about to undertake. And I just. Like Amaris, I was just surprised every single day by how this has made me feel, how this has just completely changed my outlook on like what I want to do with my life and how you guys, I mean, I, I'm so thankful to all the TAs and to Al, first of all, but to you guys who just, you know, like Molly said, you didn't have to, you didn't have to do this. You didn't have to enroll in like a poetry course, like poetry, like why? But now you know why, right? Now you know why. And it's, I'm just, uh, I can't. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> of course, you're not done, but thank you, Anna. Let's turn the camera on Lily for final word. Lily, how are you doing? I'm well, thanks, Al. Okay. Um, I guess I would say that um, I'm currently... Uh, oh, your, your job is getting well, very busy right now. It's Chris, well. <laughs> will you answer that and just talk to somebody? Okay. For a <laughs> um, so I'll say that um, I'm currently TAing Al's um, English 88 class, which is an undergraduate class here at Penn. Um, and, you know, it's sort of like one of many things that I do every day is um, take care of his students in the class and do papers and sit in on class for three hours a week. But um, one thing that's been really amazing about doing ModPo this semester has been, um, whereas, you know, English 88 should sort of just be a small part of what I'm doing every day. Now all of the poetry that's involved, which is essentially the same as the poetry that we're covering or covered in Modpo, it's like left me absolutely no time to not be thinking about the poems. <laughs> just <laughs> they're constantly on my mind. I know they're constantly on everyone else's mind. We're walking around the house making stupid puns about all the lines from the poems all the time. <laughs> um, and that's been I think the greatest part of my experience TAing Modpo. Thank you, Lily. The poems are definitely under our skin, and, yeah. and I live and breathe them as well. And so I wind up saying things to my son and daughter and wife and friends that are just quotes from these poems. And yeah. Very profound, but not me, you know. So, But I guess that's a chapter 9.3 kind of disposition. So, um, uh, Steve McLaughlin. Uh, hi there. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for extraordinary work uh, here during the webcasts and also in the forums. Yeah, indeed, this has been a really... And in general, uh, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Steve has been, since the beginning of Poem Talk, the editor of Poem Talk, and I don't know if you've listened to them, but they are very carefully edited, down to 30 minutes or less. 
and he's he's a genius. He's amazing. So, well, Steve, thanks. now that you've been called a genius, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> well, thanks. This whole thing has been a really singular uh, experience. I've learned a lot from it. It's been great to uh, to yeah, get to know so so many of you, and and uh, all kudos to Al and the crew for a great set of videos and uh, syllabus, and and uh, made. Modpo live on forever in some form or another. Um, we'll see how things uh, how things fall out. Uh, I just want to note that. So as we got to the end of this course, the terminal point was with uh, radical conceptualism. You know, Kenny Goldsmith, Erica Baum, uh, Christian Book, and so on. And I really think that underlines this idea that uh, that the study of poetry isn't necessarily about poetry or, or a corpus of uh, famous significant works or uh, uh, yeah, just knowing facts about poets out there. It's a way of uh, looking at the world. I'm just going to refer to something that Christian Book wrote uh, in the forums last Sunday. I'll just excerpt this. Uh, if we tell, if, uh, the, this was in the uh, conversation about what, yeah, about the dynamics of calling something art that isn't, you know, clearly isn't art as we know it. Um, many of you may have read this. If we teleported the bottle cap back in time, 5,000 years Steve, into the past. Sl slow it down. <laughs> okay, it's a long quote, so I just wanted well, to. Well, uh, uh, read it briefly but slowly. Sure, sure. If we paradox, teleported the bottle cap back in time, 5,000 years into the past, the mystery of its manufacture would be greeted with such wonderment that the bottle cap would undoubtedly become a sacred object enshrined in a sacred space like a temple. The bottle cap would be received as a work of art. If we teleported the bottle cap forward in time, 5,000 years into the future, the history of its significance would be greeted with such wonderment that the bottle cap would be un would un undoubtedly become a sacred object enshrined in a sacred place like a museum. The bottle cap would again be received as a work of art. A modern artist who picks up the bottle cap simply asks us to consider this hypothesis. Uh, if this thing might have been a work of art before its time in the past, and if this thing is going to be a work of art ahead of its time in the future, why not cut to the chase and simply call this thing a work of art right now? And so that's, I mean, that's, that's great. That's where we're at. That's where we end up. That's where we're at. That's yeah. So, so uh, <laughs> Christian Buck. Yeah, so looking forward. Uh, reading Kenny Goldsmith and, and Baum and, and Book um, uh, makes me a better reader of the world, a better reader of, uh, of, of packaging, like food packaging, uh, street signs, uh, ads on TV and radio. I mean, it's just endless. Um, you, how you can flip that little poetry switch and, and uh, language that would give you a headache on a bad day. Commercial language uh, can become really beautiful and singular for exactly what it is. And, uh, so thanks. This has been great. Well put, Steve. Steve McLaughlin. <laughs> Jason, your final word, pal. I know you've been working right. hard and dealing with personal things, so you can speak from your heart any way okay. you like. Okay. Um, well, yeah, can, can you see me? Because I want to make sure all these people... Yeah, yeah they're all camera. in. Yeah. All right, everyone's on camera. And um, I'm going to ask you, all, everyone who's within reach of the microphone, to, I'll give you a moment to think, to um, just think of two words of significance to you that you encountered in the course or from your life. You don't need to tell us what they what significance they have. We will they will draw significance by being drawn together. Um, so that's preface. Second, um, is I, I I wanted to read something out of this book, which I'm not going to do. So I'll just pitch it. This is um, a poet that w of of the many amazing poets yet for you to discover. Um, this is a, a book, uh, the collected poet poems of, the collected books of Jack Spicer, and the the um, plug it from the back. First thing that he, uh, one of the beginning early things that he did was a series of uh, false translations of poems by uh, Federico Garcia Lorca, and. Um, he talks about how poets talk to each other across time and across languages. And one of the thi one of the, the the cure the questions that I had in thinking of the course was the fact that this is a po a, a course about poetry, but it is a course about um, U.S. poetry in English, and, and but it's a course that travels around the world, and to to think what that means, 
what the effect of that is, and to think of um, the, the translations that have been done and the different degrees in which people are encountering the English language and for us all to be able to imagine for us, for our first language to be English, to enter one of these poems, to, for it to be your third or fourth language, um, for Ray it may be, you know, he may have 35 languages, but there may be, um, but what I would say is that there's um, something um, fascinating about the global encounter with these poems in English that occurred, you know, as the earth was rotating, you know, through the day. Um, four years ago, while I was walking home from campus um, on election night, there was a, a great joy and a, a kind of excitement about uh, a surprise about being something that, that wouldn't have been expected from such a country that has done such things and has such records of uh, misjudgments in its past. But, you know, as I crossed Broad Street in Philadelphia, which is the, the street that runs from uh, City Hall all the way uh, to, to the south of Philadelphia, and to think about being in the city of Philadelphia and to suddenly walk across, you know, at least two or three thousand people at that that night four years ago doing the electric electric slide <laughs> in this joyous uh, expression of of hope and, and potential was a beautiful thing. But on you know, four years later, I think we, you know, we're about, did we do a broadcast on election night? Or, uh, or, did, or debate, on debate, debate night, night, right. But we had another election, and, you know, after watching, you know, I was watching the election results come in, to my relief, and, um, but at the same time, watching the comments rolling in because I tend to be up really late at night so I was would be watching comments coming in between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. you know from the other side of the world and that um, that to me seemed something equally worth worthy of, of celebration and um, another beautiful moment of being in Philadelphia. Hmm. So, you. okay, everyone, you have to give me your two words. Ready? Uh, I guess immersion and delight. Greece and ekphrasis. Amazing possibilities. Windows and doors. <laughs> Relax and hopes. I believe. I already had my two words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tracy Morris. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jason and friends. All right, so we're going to get final words from Allie and Emily and then Al. Allie? Um, I guess I just want to echo what a lot of people have been saying. Um, I'm someone who is really bad at endings, um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I love literature so much, especially poetry, because you can always, always go back to poems. Um, and you know, it's been so, it was so much fun to you know do um, the videos, but it's been even maybe even more fun to watch some of everyone, everyone's that you know people who have created their, done their own close readings. Um, I just want to give a shout out to the people in Edinburgh who, uh, yeah. I loved that. That was, um, great. that was great. So, yeah, you can always come back to poems and I, 
it's so exciting to know that this is going to continue. Thank you, Ali Castleman. And someone who has an amazing knack for final words, right? I mean, didn't we almost always end those video discussions with Emily? So <laughs> to my go, chagrin. Emily, to your chagrin, <laughs> right? Exactly. Um, like Ali, I'm, I'm also really bad at, at endings and also probably beginnings. I, I hate participating in class. I have never done it before Mod Poet. So it's such an easy thing to be under the league <laughs> lights and be yeah. sitting there. I mean, I can't believe you did that. Well, that's sort of what I'm, what I'm saying is it, it should have been very hard, but it was actually very easy despite, um, despite all the lights and the, the fact that I was talking eventually to all of you and so many more eyes on me than anywhere else. And it, it's strange, but participating in ModPo felt less like a coerced sort of performance than other types of participation <laughs> in, in classes. Um, it felt less like that here than it did there and it continues to feel and has always felt very rewarding and, and easy and comfortable. And I've always been sort of baffled about that, that weird sort of paradox. And the only way I can explain it is it felt, it didn't feel like a spotlight was on me because it felt like the spotlight was on all of us. And I didn't have to perform because I was just learning and I was learning for myself and for all of you and with you. So thank you so much. Emily Harnett.